What's going on everyone? Austin John Plays here and today I want to talk about early game food and how to optimize your cooking in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. If you played Breath of the Wild, there's a high likelihood the very first thing you did was go to the Farron region to the Hardy Durian farm. Well, I want to let you know first thing, there's no hardy durians. Like, I haven't found any other than from Amiibo in this game, just none whatsoever. I don't know if they're extinct or if they're in one specific place that I don't know, but as of right now, as of time release while the game is in its infancy, you're not going to be able to go to that Farron hardy durian farm. There's a, there's a mighty banana farm. That one's a nice easy one. But as far as durians, no luck there. When it comes to early game, there's a simple concept I want to talk about, which is going to be what's called the one hit rule. Basically, ever since Breath of the Wild, they made it so no enemy can one shot you. Meaning that as long as you're at full health, you will never get KO'd from an enemy attack. You can be one shot from fall damage. Even if you have three or four hearts or whatever, you are completely safe from being one hit by enemies. Now here's my concept. If you are gonna get hit with an attack that does eight hearts and you have eight hearts, you're gonna be brought down to a quarter heart. If you're hit with an attack that does eight hearts and you have three hearts, you're brought down to a quarter heart, at which time it now costs more resources for you to then recover your health. Ever since Breath of the Wild, the exact thing that I've been doing has been working very well here in Tears of the Kingdom. So I would highly recommend this specific method for cooking food. One, when you do your shrines, focus on stamina. Get a full second stamina wheel, and then after I get a full second stamina wheel, I usually go one for one, stamina piece, hard, stamina piece, hard. Although in my first playthrough, I just did five hearts and three rings of stamina, and then I went forward. And when it comes to cooking, there's a general rule of thumb. Until you're like in like the mid game and you're ready to start making specific recipes, you're mostly just gonna be focusing on efficient recovery and a small amount of buffs. So this isn't like a full cooking guide, this is just early game cooking. So look at this palm fruit right here. It recovers one heart. If I'm in a situation that I brought down to a quarter heart, I need to eat two of these that are cooked in order to fully recover. So because of that, all I want to do is take two, cook them, and boom. Simmered fruit, four hearts, that is full recovery. Now if I had eight hearts right now, I would need to consume four cooked palm fruits in order to fully recover. Because of that, that's why I'm choosing to do this specific method. Now typically what I do is I like to hoard all of my items, and then Whenever I know that there's going to be a blood moon and you know because starting around 7 p.m. you'll start to hear sounds and then as soon as you can see the moon rise, which is typically around 9 p.m., you're going to see the actual blood moon. Whenever you see the blood moon in the sky and it's like 11 o'clock, you want to fast travel to any stable that you can as long as it's not raining. If it's raining, fast travel to another one. That's why it's important that you unlock a few of them at the beginning of the game, which they're all around Central Hyrule, you're fine. Next, you want to focus on the time. If you don't know, it's available on the map screen, as you can see right there at the bottom right, 11.25. From here, I like to grab just one palm fruit, and then as soon as it hits 11.30, I cook it, and I got a critical cook. From the time of exactly 11.30 to 11.55 p.m. during a blood moon, you're guaranteed a critical cook, which is normally a 10% chance to happen. So using only one palm fruit, I now got a better dish. Typically what I do is I just wait until the blood moon and then I start cooking up food. My first priority is stamina recovery and heart recovery. So if you have things like Staminella shrooms that says that it's cook to release stamina restoration properties, I just want to cook one of these at a time. And that's going to recover a fifth of a stamina wheel and full hearts. Cook one more. By the way, they made spam cooking like this so much faster. But you saw that my critical cook, instead of giving me extra hearts like it did on this one, it gave me extra stamina. Now that is three fifths of a stamina wheel. And that's fantastic. When it comes to hearty foods, such as hearty radishes and big hearty radishes, 
always, always, always only cook one at a time. That's a fantastic food for late game, so you may even want to hold off at this current point in time because if I could eat one palm fruit and those are readily available to fully recover, why am I going to be cooking hearty radishes at the beginning of the game? Honestly, early game, I would say the most helpful thing for temporary hearts is when you're affected by gloom. At that point, yeah, the, the temporary hearts can be helpful because if you're brought down to one heart and then you get six temporary hearts, you now have seven hearts, regardless of your current gloom status. The bad news is as soon as you go to a light route, you lose those temporary hearts because they become regular hearts. Apples recover one heart, so I'm just gonna cook two of them at the same time. Five hearts. Heck, I could just cook one at a time. One apple gave me four hearts. If you need hearts, go to Satori Mountain. There's an apple orchard there. You get like 50 or more. Plus, there is golden apples, which I'll be honest with you, I don't actually know what golden apples are for, if they're a special thing at some point in the game. But as for right now, I don't need to cook a golden apple during a blood moon because that's going to be way too many hearts. Anytime that you want to see the various things that you got, you could just come to one of your cooked dishes and check the recipe. This simmered fruit, I'm going to check the history of it. You see that I cooked one apple or two apples, one palm fruit or two palm fruit, and that's how many hearts it's supposed to give me. But because I'm critical cooking, I'm getting a lot more. When it comes to food like mighty porgies and armored porgies and the armored carp and mighty carp that are going to give you attack buffs at the beginning of the game you probably only want to cook one at a time during a blood moon that's going to give me attack up for 50 seconds so my critical cook was for the hearts not for the attack up power which sometimes that one little heart is actually pretty good this time the critical cook gave me extended duration for five and a half minutes now, if you saw my early tips video, I talked about how you, at the beginning of the game you get the barbarian armor, which gives you attack up level one. You can stack attack up level one and attack up level one food for attack up level two. Or you could do attack up level two food and outfit level one for a total of attack up three. You can never surpass level three between food and armor. This is also a great time if you wanna cook your elixirs. So if I take a frog and I'm just gonna grab a bokoblin horn, nice simple stuff. Boom, speed up level two for two and a half minutes. That time the critical cook increased the potency, which gave me speed up level two instead of speed up level one. I know that because if I go to the recipe, it's supposed to give me level one for two and a half minutes. So again, just gonna cook one porgy, one carp at a time. Raw meat, just cook one raw meat at a time. And if you go to caves where the horriblins are, you're gonna be getting a whole bunch of raw meat just sitting out there. You could go hunting if you want. And every single time I'm cooking one of these meat skewers is a full recovery. That means I could be brought down to a quarter of a heart. I eat one of these steaks that's now cooked and I'm good. One of two things is gonna happen during this Blood Moon Critical Cook. One, you're gonna see these flames. That starts at 11.50 p.m. Soon as that happens, you may already be at your maximum amount of food, but if you're not, you can actually delay a Blood Moon. All you need to do is fast travel to any shrine at 11.50 p.m. I recommend 11.50, you can squeeze 11.55. And then soon as you spawn in, you want to hold down and run and run directly into the shrine. Don't worry about fixing the camera or anything else. Just hold down and run. Get in the shrine as soon as possible. The whole point is that from 11.59 to 12 a.m., you want to be inside of the shrine. And if you check the map screen, it's now 12 a.m. We are now safe to leave the shrine and go back to the stable we were just at. Because now, we not only skipped the blood moon, but we delayed it until the next day. So if you're on a stint that you just want to cook and fill up your inventory nice and easy at the beginning of the game, do this method. And then to expedite this even further, as you see, there's, you know, no blood moon or anything. If I go look at the moon, it's not even a full moon right now. That's weird. So I guess blood moons don't rely on full moons anymore. I don't have a fire weapon on me. There's a torch here. I'm just going to drop a flint down, strike it with a metal weapon. And I'm just going to go ahead and sleep until nighttime, which is going to put me at 9 p.m. Keep in mind that if you chose like morning, you're going to sleep and you're also going to see the blood moon cutscene. 
So now that it's 9 p.m., that's north. If I look to the right, that is east. The moon should be rising from the east. Or during this time period that you have nothing to do and you're just waiting for the moon to spawn, if you have any amiibos, not even Zelda amiibos, just any amiibos, here's Alex. I'm scanning Alex, and you get some stuff dropped from the sky. Including a zap shroom that I've never gotten before, and a raw meat. That raw meat is a full recovery, including the enormous Detective Pikachu amiibo. Yeah, that's that's an amiibo, it's weird. And it's not a lot of materials, but it's some. This game makes it so that you can't have too many things on screen at once. So because of that, you can probably scan three non-Zelda amiibos. Here's Gold Mario. And you're not going to worry about things despawning. Here's... Uh, I forgot the owl's name from Animal Crossing. I know, I'm, I'm shameful right now. So generally for the non-Zelda amiibos, you can scan three at a time, and boom, there's our Blood Moon. I still have time, I'm gonna go ahead and scan my Awakening Link. Which he's gonna be dropping these chests, which are gonna have sometimes apples, sometimes arrows. When I say chest, I'm at crates. And then this chest, what are we gonna get? A Soldier's Broadsword. Here's my Ganondorf NFC card. He's gonna drop me some raw meat. Oh, Wolf Link is actually fantastic for raw meat. Granted, if you don't have a large amiibo collection, bro, look at that. Look at all the look at all the meals right there. If you don't have a large amiibo collection, you're more than welcome to just go around, hunt down, forage for food. If you see birds and boars, shoot arrows at them. You're good to go. Do some hunting. 11:25. I'm just gonna go ahead and hold my raw meat. I like to cook apples and raw meat the most because I know that those are never going to be used for upgrading specific pieces of armor or any quests in the overworld. Really, the only things you can do with apples and raw meat is you can give apples to horses to increase their affection level if they're not maxed out or instead of, you know, just hitting L. And dogs you can give raw meat or apples to and after you give them four, they're gonna show you where treasure is located, which has done it every stable. And then there's also, I found so far one side quest that involves that. It's a pretty fun side quest. Just, just a heads up, if you're next to a stable, but not at a stable and you see a dog, make sure you give him food. He might show you something great. Oh, there we go. You can't carry any more meals. That's what we wanted to see. So if I go to my cooked dishes and I sort by effect, I have one hearty food, a whole bunch of stamina recovery foods, a few attack ups, a defense up, and then just meat. Just cooked meat skewers. All of it is five hearts recovery. That's the reason that I get my second stamina wheel and then I get my fifth heart and then I get my third entire stamina wheel. After my stamina wheel is completely done, it's usually only then that I start doing more hearts. And by the time you reach that point in the game that you have cleared, what is it? 40 shrines for your stamina wheel, you probably have a good backlog of food and you can actually start cooking better dishes. But keep in mind, if I have 10 hearts, all I need to do is cook two meats and I'm good. <laughs> there you go. There is some helpful advice, tips and hints for early game cooking for your recovery on Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. If you found this helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turning on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.